Welcome to the Go Reflect Yourself podcast, bringing you real strategies to cultivate the life and business of your dreams, full of freedom and fulfillment, starting from the inside out. Working hard and staying busy will only get you so far. To truly become happy, content, and who you're meant to be, we have to move beyond physical capacities and begin to look from within. We have to change our thoughts and our mindset into our most powerful assets, transforming you to take inspired action so you can become a better version of yourself and to have the life of your dreams. You are stronger than you believe. You have greater powers than you know. Hello there. Welcome to another episode of Go Reflect Yourself. Heather Kreider here, and I'm really excited to talk to you. I'm always excited to talk to you. I feel like I repeat the same exact things every time, and I probably do, so sorry about that. If this is your first time here, thank you. If you're back for another episode, I really, really appreciate you. I'd like to talk, the the prior episode, if you haven't listened to it, I would really suggest for you to go back and listen to it. I got on a discussion, maybe also known as a rant, which again, I'm sorry, that's just kind of how I end up, but talking about emotional management strategies and things you can do when you're triggered, because it is not a matter of if you're triggered, it's a matter of when. Life's gonna happen, things are gonna happen. We constantly, are in this human experience with other humans who we all are imperfect and we're all just trying to do our best and that's really the truth despite what you might think about certain people and i do have my suspicions but we are in this common human experience and everybody really is just trying to do that they're just trying to get through their day and my goal for everybody I believe everybody has the ability to to be better, to be a better versions of themselves, not just for themselves, but for all the people surrounding them in their lives and their communities and the people that they're going to serve in the future and affect in the future. So the more that we can develop skills to help ourselves, You never know who's watching and who can gain something from that. And the easiest way I can think about that is my kids. And it's really kind of a jaw-dropping moment when you see your child behave in a way that you know they're mirroring your behavior, good or bad. It's really exciting when they mirror behavior that's positive and you're thinking that's awesome and that's awesome they learned that from me but it's also from the flip side a little eye-opening and maybe disappointing and reflective it's a reflective moment when you see your child behave in a way that's less than desirable and you realize they got that for me and I've had both of those moments And I'm going to continue to have both of those moments. But my point to this is the more skills that you can develop for yourself, the more it can affect you, be productive, to be positive, to help you at work, to help you with your boss, to help you with employees, to help you with your spouse, your significant other, your parents, your siblings, your kids, everything, because life's going to happen. Stuff's going to happen. Situations are going to happen. And you're going to be triggered. And by triggered, I mean you're going to feel a certain way that's going to put you in a moment where you feel like you have a setback. Or it's going to put you in an unmotivated place. Or it's going to give you doubt. Or it's going to give you anxiety. Situations are going to happen. And they may happen every day. And they may happen more than once every day. So that's that's why I'm doing this entire podcast. That's it. That's the reason is to make you a better version of yourself so you can deal with things, so you can deal with things in a way that can make you happier and more fulfilled and more joyful. So that way you can get to setting your goals, to get to achieving your goals, 
no matter what those may be. And when I set to start this podcast, I actually knew I was going to talk about so many different things, including business strategy, development and, and marketing. And, but I'm so passionate about the inner work and that fills my cup up more anyway, talking about the inner work that in my opinion, I think business skills are secondary. People tend to often focus on making money. And yes, that's important. And obviously when you need food and to survive and to grow and to do things, you need money. But you can't get more of money if you're constantly sabotaging yourself by your thinking or by the way you react to things. And so I've learned this kind of the hard way, honestly. And I've talked about this in prior episodes of some of my own failures and setbacks and crap. We'll just put it like that. That happens because it does. But, oh gosh, there's just, (laughs) I have to stop myself right here because I'm just really feeling compelled to just hold space for everybody here right now that's listening. Because a journey can be so fun and rewarding. And I know part of the the learning that I've had in my own journey is really how to connect. I'll call it connect the dots, but it's con- it's connection in the right order. And I'm still trying to find a better way to explain that. So if you have any ideas, let me know. But what I mean is over my career... People have often come to me, I've spent a big part of my career helping other people be successful, become successful, help their businesses become successful. And there's definite strategies to put in place for that, but I call it connecting in the right order. So most people want to connect to their clients. More clients means more revenue. More revenue means the business is flourishing, etc. And that's great. We can connect you to more clients But obviously, there's things you have to do inside of there first. So that's kind of one layer. The middle layer, if you will, is connecting to what you're doing, the mission, the vision, the employees, the customers, um, not just from a business perspective, but really is the core, is the core of what you're doing in your business connected in the right ways, your mission, your vision all of those things. So it's still a little bit of strategy, but it's it's kind of, we're, we're peeling down the layers. And then what I find is the most valuable interconnected layer is you. If you're the business owner, it's you. If you're the CEO, it's you. If you're the team leader, it's you. If you're the parent, it's you. If you're the spouse, it's you. No matter what, because you're at the core of every relationship you have no matter what that looks like. And so that's why I'm ridiculously passionate about the inner work for us to understand and to be free from the constraints of this emotional uh, baggage. I don't like that word. This emotional triggers, the emotional scenarios, the emotional weight and blank, this, this weight that we so often carry with us because that's what leads to stress. That's what leads to anxiety. That's what leads to poor health and production and the, or the lack of production. And so it's this whole big giant ripple effect and your success in all key areas of your life, all the pillars of your life depend on you and you only, because if you're not fulfilled. And if you're not confident and have the tools and the skills you need, then these things aren't going to flourish as well. So yes, strategy is important in business. Yes, knowing how to make the perfect business plan and to the perfect funding document and, and the, the, the perfect marketing strategy, the perfect Facebook Facebook ad campaign. Yeah, those are important. But if you're not connected with your clients and if you're most importantly not connected with yourself, it's, I don't want to say it doesn't matter, but it's not going to be as valuable. It's just not. So 
rant over. Thank you. <laughs> um, the last episode, I talked a lot about those self-management strategies, and that's why. And emotional management is going to be an everyday struggle. And it doesn't have to be hard. And I, I left that episode with a tiny little just mindfulness breathing practice that you can do anywhere, anytime. And so I'd like to continue the conversation on self-compassion. And what I was talking about, I started talking a little bit about um, self-compassion. And we often feel that meeting ourselves with criticism and this harsh inner voice and this doubtful voice or even ignoring often when we have scenarios or when we contribute to scenarios, we often just ignore it. And then we kind of sweep it under the rug. And then guess what happens? It creeps that the, the dust that you put under the rug creeps back out. And then it tends to bleed into other areas. And then maybe some frustration builds up or it's just, it's never a good thing to sweep things under the rug. And sometimes maybe instead of sweeping something under the rug, maybe you blow up at somebody and then you feel bad about that. Or you let somebody blow up at you and you don't respond the way you do, then you feel bad about that. And instead of being mad at that person, now you're mad at yourself. See? So self-compassion is a big, big component in being able to help manage emotional situations. And specifically, what we were talking about is how self-compassion can help you accept and move past a scenario or situation. It's really great learning opportunities and beating yourself up about something never helps. And we often feel that that gives us motivation. If I just kick myself in the rear hard enough and I beat myself up and I say how stupid and dumb I was and how that was an awful situation, that I'm going to be more motivated in the future to change and be different. And it's not true. And actually research has shown that. Kristen Neff, the researcher I was talking about, who has sent, sent, spent <laughs> a significant amount of time researching self-compassion, it shows how it has a huge benefit to our overall emotional well-being and our resilience. And there's been several studies done, conducted, that really have evaluated how participants respond after setbacks and mistakes and, and how, how they look at their own weaknesses. And just to kind of give you an example of, of what that looks like, this is a little bit of the research stuff, but this is important because I want to show you what that why you need to learn more self-compassion. And let me just say this too. Often people look at self-compassion as um, like, it's okay, honey. Like it, kind of from the pity perspective of you'll do better next time. And that's not really valuable either. And I think that's why a lot of people don't really, and myself included, and, and I kind of still get in those modes. And I don't, I don't want to be pitied. I just want understanding and acceptance. Like, hey, you messed up. Hey, hey, you messed up. I get it. And that probably didn't feel that good. When a scenario happens, if you can say it to yourself, like, wow, that was kind of, that was kind of a hard scenario. I did not react in my best way. Um, yeah, that really, that was challenging. That didn't feel good. I don't like how I got triggered or I don't like that this feeling is occurring for me. I'm, I'm feeling shame and I'm feeling fear and I'm feeling embarrassment. That doesn't feel that great. Just saying those things is part of that acceptance. And it's also part of the kindness to 
to be honest of the, what that feeling is. And again, maybe this is a bigger a bigger conversation on understanding the emotion. And that might be part of the bigger conversation. But anyway, let's go back. I was talking about research because I think it's really important to just talk about what the research has shown and why self-compassion is much more motivating than that harsh type of misconceived motivation. So there was a research study conducted where they had two, or excuse me, they divided people into three different groups. One, they had a control group that had no intervention whatsoever. They let them do what basically react the way they would normally. Then they had a second group where it was called a self-esteem group that that group was asked to journal about positive characteristics about themselves. So it was very like a, from a self-esteem perspective and, and to look at those positive attributes and how they would characterize themselves. And then the third group was all, uh, was a group about self-compassion. And then the, in this group, they were asked to journal about themselves and their challenges from a perspective of understanding, acceptance, and self-compassion. So maybe you might be surprised, but what they found from the groups, from the research conducted among the groups, they measured four different outcomes. They measured a growth mindset and a belief of the possibility of change. They measured motivation to make amends after an ethical transgression. So something that they did that they don't feel that was an ethical thing. And then a motivation to improve on a weakness. And then effort to improve in this particular scenario was effort to improve students' time spent studying after performing poorly on a test. Those were the outcomes that they measured among these three different groups. So what were the results? And this is where you might be surprised. Often people think if they just have more self-esteem or if they just like give themselves more, more motivation, just like the hoorah type of speech motivation, that they'll have positive outcomes. And so what they actually found was compared to the control group and the self-esteem group, so those first two groups, the self-compassion group actually scored higher on all four of those outcome categories. So what that meant is they were more likely to have a growth mindset. They more likely wanted to fix a past ethical transgression. They were more, they had more motivation to improve and they had more effort spent on improving. So I find that ridiculously fascinating because self-compassion meant we could move past things quicker. So the key takeaway from this study is that our self-compassion was a more effective way to meet our challenges than doing nothing, of course, but more than any other common strategy, more than just trying to boost our self-esteem or, or just emphasizing a positive image. Self-compassion actually beat all the other strategies. So kind of the overall, I guess, bigger takeaway is Self-compassion may increase self-improvement motivation. It encourages people to confront their mistakes, to confront their weaknesses without self-deprecation or defensiveness. So that's really what I think is important is that self-deprecation. Like, I'm a dummy. There's, oh my gosh, I just, I thought about this. Have you ever seen the movie Tommy Boy? <laughs> And um, he's in the middle of the factory and he runs into a machinery and he hit his head and he fell down and he stood up and he, he said, I'm retarded. Now, please don't be offended by that. It's part of a movie, but it's absolutely hilarious. But it's that total self-deprecation. And often people think you have to have self-deprecation to shed light on 
what you are or that if you just talk about how overconfident you are. Confidence is great and the ability to see when you make mistakes is great. But to have, to really, really have self-compassion, research is showing where that's more effective in building confidence over time Self-compassion actually has a higher ability to build confidence because they actually spent more time, people tend to spend more time moving past and trying to work through and trying to actually be better. Being overly confident without those things tends to not lead to as much growth. So that's the, that's why self-compassion is so very, very important and valuable. And I will continue to talk about self-compassion. And I know just now I talked a little heavy on a particular research study, but I do find it really valuable because this isn't just fluff. This isn't, or it's not just made up stuff. It's not made up concepts. It's real research that's being done on the different ways people are dealing with things. And if we can learn these more effective ways of dealing with things, then obviously the the better we can respond after setbacks or mistakes or really even being able to see our own weaknesses and to be able to say, hey, I'm not that good at this. Or, Or a better way to rephrase that is, this is a weakness of mine and something I need to work on. This is a strength of mine and something I need to use to my benefit and value. That's what helps us with our confidence and helps us grow and helps us achieve to be able to be closer in relationships. So I typically end my podcasts with a little tip of the day, mindful moment, however you want to talk about it. Um, I'm actually going to just talk about that right now, because this is probably a little bit longer of an explanation. But here's something you can do to help you put some perspective to acceptance within compassion, and to kind of look at an open kindness, compassionate way to look at things. And what I mean is, I would invite you to spend some time in a little journaling exercise. And it doesn't need to be long, maybe five, five, six, seven minutes, something like that. But a little journaling exercise that can help you experiment with what I just said, acceptance and self-compassion. And when you do, and you can do it right now, if you'd like, get out a pen and paper, or whenever you do, just give yourself the opportunity to just free flow. When you actually do it, give yourself, obviously, an undisturbed five to seven minutes, or 10 or 15, whatever you feel comfortable with, but no less than five minutes. And the journaling exercise really is an opportunity for you in a complete care and candor perspective to look at a situation and imagine that you are a person who knows you well. And maybe I mentioned earlier about the grandparent vibe or the grandparent love. Imagine yourself as if you're your grandparent who loves you, who cares about you deeply, who has nothing but your best interest in mind. It doesn't have to be a grandparent. It can be somebody else. But typically, you kind of feel that love and energy and kindness from a grandparent. But regardless, whomever you pick, and it doesn't have to be a real person, but kind of works better if it, if it is. But imagine you writing a letter to yourself from the perspective of that person, a friend, a mentor, whomever. So you're writing a letter to yourself from that person. And again, they know you well. They understand you. They want what's best for you. But they also know your challenges. So what 
would they say? This is what you're going to write about. What would they say to you about the challenges and opportunities you're currently facing? So what would they say to you about your challenges and opportunities that you're currently facing? So what that means is from a loving and a kindness and a, an openness perspective, from a care and a candor perspective, what would they say? You don't have to list out the scenario in detail. It's not about the scenario. It's about how would they, what would they say to you about the challenges and opportunities that you're currently facing, maybe identifying your weaknesses or looking at it from a perspective of maybe you're experiencing this because, or maybe this is happening because, or um, just what might they notice or what kindness might they offer or what compassion. And again, it's not about letting you off the hook. It's just about what honest conversation can take place or maybe advice. So there's no right or wrong here, but the idea is how would you talk to someone in a scenario from an open and a kindness perspective? How would you talk to somebody And then clearly, as you go through that exercise, you want to be able to have the ability to talk to yourself in that same manner. So I'm going to wrap up now. That's a little bit more about self-compassion. I don't really invite any listeners to, um, to contact me. I really haven't done much in the form of of, hey, you know, let's chat, but, but I will, I will offer that right now. If you have an issue or a problem, or you want some neuro coaching through a mindset perspective, or you want to learn more about self-compassion, or if it's just to say, hey, or if you have an idea or something you want to learn more about, I'd love to hear from you. I would love, love to see where you're at and just to understand. And um, there's a lot of resources that that I have. There's a, a few on my website. We're currently in the process of doing some reorganization internally for kind of the future goals that that we have here. And I'm really excited to be able to bring those to you very soon. But there are some resources on my site, um, but I have a gazillion other resources off site. So if you're in need of something or direction, um, I do offer a complimentary, I will offer a complimentary 30 minute strategy session, which basically a strategy session means is what are your goals? What's keeping you there? from achieving them? And what step-by-step guide do we need to put in place to have clarity around how to achieve those goals? Because that's really what it's about. It might be with a relationship. It might be with um, building your business. It might be just getting through something that's blocking you. There's a lot of different ways. And when we look at business strategy, it's a really big term and it's confusing and it's overwhelming. But it's not just about business. It's about having a successful, happy, productive, and joyful life. And again, my mission is to be able to help others overcome their challenges, setbacks, and roadblocks to be able to do that, to push through and have the best versions of themselves, to become the person who they want to become and and the, the person they desire to become. So however I can assist with that, let me know. Thank you so much for being here and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Go Reflect Yourself. For more inspired action or to stay in touch, head on over to heatherjkreider.com or you can follow me on Instagram at hashtag heatherjkreider or hashtag go reflect yourself. Until next time, I'm challenging you to go reflect yourself. We'll see you soon.